They're saying catch and release is is on overdrive right now. Uh, Secretary Nielsen is just telling them to basically dump the illegals all over the country. So in the uh, spending bill, it says right here, none of the funds provided by this act or any other act or provided from any accounts in the Treasury of the United States reveals. Now, the stories coming out of Border Patrol right now, like actual quotes, are that they are not actually running background checks right now on the people they're letting into the country. But the only way it says that you that you can't do this is if the person already has a felony conviction or a pending felony charge for aggravated uh, felony, child abuse, sexual violence or abuse, or child pornography. So any person outside of having that felony or currently being prosecuted for that felony cannot be deported and and proceedings can't even begin so they have to get permission from the localities that own that that that, that land where they build the border would fall in a border city they have to get permission from the local city and basically the mayor within that city or the census designated place as the case may be such consultations shall continue until september 30th 2019 or until Agreement is reached, if earlier, and may be extended beyond that date of September 30th by agreement of the parties, and no funds made available in this act shall be used for such construction while consultations are continuing, meaning it could go on forever. And the cities and census-designated place described in this subsection are as follows. One, Roma, Texas. Two, Rio Grande City, Texas. Three, Escobaris, Texas. Four, La Grula, Texas, and five, the census-designated place of Salino, Texas. So he has $1.375 billion to build in the Rio Grande Valley sector, minus the five places I named. And then in all of the Rio Grande Valley sector that's left, it's named in here. And he needs permission from the local border uh, town mayors to do it. The debates don't end until September 30th, and they could be extended indefinitely. So it's called... The de facto amnesty, no wall spending bill for a reason. And and <laughs> I mean, we, we knew all this from day one. We started reading it right after they announced he was going to sign it. You know, this this mm-hmm. is really not rocket science. This is exactly what Trump signed. And this is what he's trying to convince us is really good for us. You know, this is what he I mean, and guys, I will, uh, you know, feel free to go on my Twitter, Deplorable D Gold. I posted this in a tweet. I, I did all the work for you. This is not taken out of a Breitbart article, Gateway Pundit. This is me going through the bill, screen capturing the sections, and underlining all of the important parts. I recommend go to my Twitter, grab these, save them to your phone, save them to your computer, so that when you're talking to you know, your friends, your allies, trying to wake people up to the fact that we are being flimflammed, this is the proof. It, it's the same thing I did with that uh, Oaktown guy when... Uh, he was putting out propaganda. I broke it down. I put a video on Deplorable TV that came off of one of our live streams uh, showing the evidence, showing the resolution Trump signed and showing that Oaktown was either uh, stupid and spreading propaganda or he was willingly spreading propaganda. But you, the, the, the bills, the laws don't lie. That's what's in there. Now, Donald Trump could defy them. He could put 100,000 troops down on the border. He could defy the courts when they uh, come after him, but he's not doing that. And th- and that's assigning then, again, 16 DHS or something to Donald Trump that he hasn't done yet. But as of right now, that is what he signed. And, and he did not even force them to come back with the veto-proof vote on this. That's the bill. So you, you basically cannot deport anyone, and you cannot build any wall. No. So we just straight up were lied to, and then he has the nerve to do speeches talking about finish the wall. He also reduced the number of beds in detention centers by almost 10,000, meaning when they do catch people over the border and they put them in a detention center, they're all full now. And as soon as they're full, it goes back to default catch and release, where as soon as they catch them, they release them with a piece of paper court uh, document that says, oh, I promise you I'll show up. Exactly. And I think it was you pointed out, and I did not pull this out of the bill, but it was also in the bill that I believe they had, uh, what was it? It was funding for close to 50,000 
yeah. beds and they actually reduced it to 40,000 like and that. border patrol i think it was a uh uh was a brendan or brandon judd yeah. of the union they were the ones who endorsed trump the first time the border patrol union ever endorsed trump and he came out in an interview and he said look we freaking captured 78,000 at the border last month we only have betting for 40 yep meaning the 38 automatically are released into our country that's why we're dumping them. And then the 40 that are sitting there as new ones are coming in, they're just processing them. Like you said, they're handing them a speeding ticket, telling them show up in court in three years. Right. And they never, and, and apparently, and this was even when Donald Trump used to talk about the truth, it's something like 10% actually ever show up at court. Yeah. Why would you? You snuck in illegally. They brought you in. They brought you to a processing center and said, ha ha, we caught you. Now, here's a piece of paper saying that you'll follow the law and come back when we when we tell you to. Now, how would they even get in touch with them to tell them when they're going to uh, have to go to court? They don't know where they're going. It's not like they got them at a house and they're just chilling and they're like, oh, you're the owner of this house. Now we have your address. I mean, how are they getting in touch with them to tell them, oh, by the way, you have to be in court next week? Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> dude, 100 percent. And, and I remember there was an article a couple of months ago. I'll dig it up one of these days. I've got a bookmark somewhere, but they were talking about how the border patrol couldn't even get a bill passed where they wanted to retina scan um, and fingerprint these illegals so that they could at least try to find them later. And right. they aren't even allowed to do that. Right. Even the children, they're not, they want, they're not allowed to retina scan the kids. Why can't they? I mean, what do they do? Just fingerprint them? I think they were saying that they're not even allowed to fingerprint the children. They just let them go. So nobody even knows if they belong. Remember, they were going to do DNA testing, and then that was under Sessions, the very end of Sessions. Yeah. And as far as I read, they're not even doing the DNA testing to prove that the person with them is the actual parent. So we're just we're just totally in child trafficking mode right now. So we're trafficking the children. We're normalizing transsexualism. I mean, being gay is just part of life now. I mean, like you're like a protected class now where you get a, an extra bump for being gay. And we're allowing as many people over the border as can possibly get here because there's nowhere to put them and we won't throw them out. Okay. So yeah, the collapse well, isn't coming. Well, yeah. And, and, and here, and you know, and here's the other crazy part. I think it was maybe Michelle Malkin or Ann Coulter or Laura, or Laura Ingram. One of them was talking about how basically it's this revolving door of trafficking now because I could walk over the border with uh, a kid and then the kid back across the border and they could walk in with you or with Brian. Um, my, my stepfather, I told you, is an engineer. My mom and him just bought a house down in Texas and he wanted to go see the border slat. So he went down there and he could not believe. He said even the pictures we're seeing are kind of, uh, it's kind of an illusion. The actual um, slats are staggered. So he said you can fit, you know, definitely drug packages. You could probably fit a toddler through them. So, so you could walk across with a toddler, come into the country, pass the toddler through the fence, and he can use it to walk in with another person. Trade deals. They believed that he was going to fight back against globalism and the America first sort of Pat Buchanan agenda uh, that he ran on years ago on that platform. So that's they actually fought him because they thought he was going to do that. Now, I would say there were the, the we called the cruise bots back then. Those were probably the closest to actually attacking Trump from the right direction because they were attacking Trump, believing that he was actually a liberal. So if anything, the cruise bots get credit for uh, pointing out what Donald Trump has really become. The never Trumpers were way off. They, they believed what we believed, that he was going to be America first. They want to enforce an agenda. OK, they always have. And we all we always knew about it. Like the, the right wing always knew what what Paul Ryan was. That was that was never hidden. You know, no. it was just that we always knew there was temperance to him. There was always people that were going to, you know, stand up to him because he wasn't a real conservative. When they elected mm -hmm. Trump, they figured that Ryan would have to get on board, not that Trump would just do whatever Ryan was going to yeah. do anyway. So, no, I don't believe that Jeb would have would have been worse. I believe Trump is the worst case scenario right now of what we could hope for. Even back in the days when Barack Obama was elected, it was uh, this, this was Glenn Beck in his prime before he went like totally crazy. And Glenn Beck even said at the time that he was glad that Barack Obama won over John McCain because he believed McCain would have been more dangerous than Barack Obama.
because at least Obama was out in the open. The stories were out there about his ties to Reverend Wright, his ties to uh, radicalism, to communists. I mean, in his own words, he admitted to all of that stuff. And that at least it was out in the open and America would see all the destruction happening under a guy who was transparent, where McCain would have done similar things, but conservatives would have been asleep because they would have assumed the war hero was in there and everything was fine. Well, now we're in the situation where it's the McCain scenario. We have Donald Trump and people are asleep. I know I will say in the last month, I think since uh, the border issue and Breitbart's been doing a good job of covering this. Um, there are people that are starting to uh, wake up to this. People are starting to go, wait, something doesn't smell right. It sucks that it took this long, but uh, I do see it starting to happen now. And the Mueller report, even conservatives, uh, instead of just blindly cheering it, like, awesome, yay, two years, and what do we get? A Cracker Jack prize. Trump isn't a Russian spy. Are starting to go, something doesn't smell right here. What the hell is going on? So, uh, well, think about it, it. The Mueller report spent what $10 billion or $15 billion, probably even more. You know, now we can't afford a wall because it's just too expensive, and we can't afford this and we can't afford that. We can't afford anything, but we can afford a worthless investigation into a point that everybody knew was fake for billions and billions of dollars. We're fine with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and you know what's hilarious in, in that uh, spending bill I just reviewed? What? Right under the part where it assigns $1.375 billion for the no-wall wall. Right. There's $15 billion for repairs on Border Patrol stations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> $15 billion, That's the wall. $15 billion for repair. They, I think for a year now, look at what they've done. They've gotten Trump to, to cave on everything. They've gotten him to play ball with the deep state. They've gotten him to hire Bolton and all these people and get rid of everyone else, except Kellyanne Conway, whose husband seems to be the leading anti, he's like Tom Steyer at this point, right? <laughs> I think they gave him a year and they said, we'll make sure that you're on board, you know, with all of this bullshit. And for a year, they made sure. And now they, they ended Mueller because now they want Trump to do more, like sign more terrible bills. But at the same time, they're afraid that he might go ballistic. So they're like, listen, we're still going to keep all the state investigations open. We can still throw all your kids in. All we need to do is pull Manafort out of the loony solitary cell we've got him in, you know, and he'll he'll spill on whatever we want at this point. So yeah, they're like, we well, we're going to take the, the leash off a little bit, you know? Yeah, well, exactly. And Brandon Smith brings up this point. They, he says, you'd think they could credibly fabricate something. And, and here's the whole thing. One. Yes, they could fabricate something. Two, they don't need to. Because like we said, they, they didn't have to get Trump on being a Russia agent because that's nonsense or on obstructing justice because he can't obstruct justice on a case that there was no actual crime. They didn't need to fabricate anything. Like we said, they kicked the front door in to his 15-year personal attorney whose office was down the hall from his, literally three doors down in Trump Tower, took all the files out of his house his storage locker and his office and they have you know they have all of his irs records you know they have everything on his business because of the lawsuits they've been filing against trump organization the charity they don't have to fabricate any crime so you have to ask yourself after all of this why didn't Mueller come out with a number of crimes that at least they had a reason to say hey let's impeach him and why did the deep state and the Democrats the last 24 hours before the report come out start downplaying it and saying, you know, impeachment's off the table? Because clearly he works for them, with them, or cut a deal with them. They want him there, obviously, because the whole goal for the last two years was supposedly to remove him. And then Mueller comes out and now they want him there. And people say, oh, maybe Mueller was a gray hat. I'm like, well, a gray hat to what? Clear him, but then not arrest Hillary and the rest of them that actually did commit crimes, of which we know about, of which Comey put on the record? Like, we know these people committed crimes.